this sound familiar? You're trying to write a novel. First, what usually happens is you start out strong. You're really inspired. Wow, I have the best idea ever. So you're writing, you're writing, you're writing, and then you kind of run out of steam. You get to that stage where you're staring at the screen, trying to figure out what to write next. You force yourself to go along to keep adding more, but there's this voice in your head telling you how stupid it is. You start to wonder, am I just deluding myself? Nobody's going to want to read this. Definitely nobody's going to want to buy it. And then, worst of all, real life attacks. Thanks a lot, real life. And you get taken away from your writing. And by the time you get back to your computer, you've totally lost it. Your inspiration is gone. Your idea is cold. Another novel has died before it's even been born. Ugh, I hate that. <laughs> so I'm trying to write a novel next month and I think maybe you might be too. And if you are, stick around because I want to help you because I know that you think you don't have time to write and it's not true. You do have time to write. You just don't have time to procrastinate. Think about it. If you could sit down at the computer and you knew exactly what to write, the words would just flow. You'd be totally inspired. You could write an entire chapter in a day. You could write two chapters in a day and you would easily finish your novel in a month or less and it would be awesome. And you know what? It is actually possible because that's how professional writers write. They consistently put out publishable novels and it's not just 50,000 word books either. 100,000 words, 120,000 word best-selling novels year after year after year. And they all use the same core techniques. Sure, they each have their different, slightly different, you know, quirks and methods, but at the heart, all the professional writers, those people who consistently put out good novels year after year, they use the same core techniques. And they're not actually that hard, but you do have to know them. Once you learn the no-fail formulas that professional writers use cons to consistently write well and often and fast, then you'll be inspired any time you sit down to write. And I can teach you some of those techniques and I'm going to in this and a couple more videos, starting with picking the right project. Because if you don't pick the right novel to write right now, you won't be able to finish it. There's a really simple trick to figuring out what is the best novel for you to work on right now. And I'm about to tell you what that is, but first I just really quickly want to warn you that this video is only going to be up for a week or two because pretty soon I'm going to be working on my novel and I'm going to do it along with the people who join me in the 30 day novel course. It's going to be a very elite and exclusive writing course, but I just wanted to have some of these videos up for free for everybody. Um, as much as I can before that, but they won't be up forever. So just that also means that the workbook that you can get um, along with this video is also only going to be available for a short period of time. And I just wanted to warn you so that you don't look for this video later and like, oh, where, where is it? Where is it? And then get mad at me that it's gone. Okay. So, all right. So let's say that you're planning to write a novel chances are you might already have an idea what you want to write. In fact, you might have a lot of ideas <laughs> about what you want to write. And the hardest part might be choosing it, choosing which one or trying to narrow your focus so that you know what to put exactly in this novel. And you may also find yourself kind of flitting around. You're really enthusiastic about an idea today. And then tomorrow you find yourself chasing another idea. The problem is that if you keep changing your ideas or you can't settle on one or you're trying to stuff so much into one novel that you actually sabotage yourself. You actually may never get past chapter one. If you keep starting new projects over and over and over, you don't complete any of them. And I'm speaking from personal experience because this is exactly what I would do to myself all the time my hard drive, you would not believe how many chapter ones of different books, abandoned books that I have on my computer. It's, it's really sad, actually. <laughs> 
they were good ideas. They were good ideas. But for years, I didn't know how to pick the best one and stick with it. And honestly, what changed for me, what made a huge difference in actually becoming, going from being a hobbyist writer to being a career writer was when I learned how to pick the right book to write. And that enabled me to stick with it and finish it. And not only was I able to finish those books, I was then able to sell them. Huge difference. And there is a simple way to pick the one idea, the best idea for you to work on right now. The novel that you can finish. And I'm going to tell you what that is in this video. Now would be a good time to go ahead and download the free notebook, the free workbook. It's, it's really short. It's, it's not going to be that hard for you to do, but go ahead and download that now. You can pause the video and then come back to it so you can follow along as I go through this. It's, uh, it's completely free. You just have to do one little thing. Just enter your email and it will put you on a, on a list that, you know, I'll alert you about when I have new videos out. And if you don't want to be on that list, it's really easy. Just opt out or don't, you know, don't opt in when it sends you the confirm thing. But if you want to get uh, updated about more of these free videos, then just stay on the list. Okay, but go ahead and grab the, the free, the free workbook to go along with it as I go over this. Okay, ready? Got it? Remember, you can pause and come back. Okay, so just you can either print the workbook or you can just follow along. I've actually made it a Word doc so that you can type into it. It's on a PDF. You can actually just add to it if you need to on your computer right next to this video as we go through it. So, and if you've, one other thing, if you've read my book, 30 day novel, this is going to sound familiar, but it's still going to really benefit you to go through it with me step by step. So I strongly encourage you to do that. There's also a secret little bonus right at the end that is not found anywhere else. It's not in my book. It is just for you right now. So definitely grab that. Okay, so on the first page, you're going to see five categories. These are the five questions that you'll want to answer about each possible novel that you could write. Genre, word count, whether it's a series or standalone, research or foundation, and the difficulty level. I'm going to go through them one by one. Genre. What is the genre? What is the subgenre? So if you're not sure, there is a list of genres and subgenres in the little workbook. Look through that, see if one would be a good fit. And then ask yourself, is this a genre that I love? Do you know it well? Have you read it? What other books would sit on the same shelf in the bookstore? If your book were in a bookstore, where would it be categorized? Who would be its neighbors? That's what you want to know. And go ahead and write those things down. Then we're going to come to word count. How long is this book going to be? Try to answer in terms of word count rather than page count. If you don't know it, that's okay. Think of what the page count would be and then multiply that times 250 words per page and, and calculate it out. And try to learn to think in word count because that's a much more stable way to think about your book. Page count can change all the time. It's not in your control, but word count is. So the other thing you need to keep in mind is that different genres have different word counts. And of course, there's always exceptions to the rule. I know you're already saying, but Tara, what about, what about, what about? Yes, there's exceptions. But in general, readers, agents, and publishers expect and want a certain word count when they read a certain kind of book. So it's good to know these word counts and it's good to aim for them. So I can't list them all here, but in the workbook, you'll actually find genre by genre and subgenre by subgenre, all of the standard word counts and it's a range low to high. So what you should probably do is once you know your genre and your subgenre, aim for the middle of that range. If you can, that's where, that's the word count that you want to hit for this novel. All right. The third question on our list, series or standalone. Is this a standalone novel? That means that the story will be complete at the end of the book and you're not anticipating a sequel. So think 
Gone with the Wind. And ignore that really, really bad sequel that they made a hundred years later. Or is it a series? Is it a saga or sequential series? Saga or a sequential series means that it's a story arc told over multiple books. And the story is not complete until you reach the final book. So think Lord of the Rings. And finally, is it part of an episodic series? An episodic series means that each book is independent, has its own story arc, but it is connected to others in the same series. Think A is for alibi. All right, so the fourth thing we want to look at is the research or the foundation that you're going to need in order to write this novel. Does it require any really extensive research before you can really feel comfortable writing it? For instance, does it require more world building? Do you know enough about the rules and the, the lifestyle in your world? Is there anyone you'd like to interview about their real life experience in order to do this? I think uh, Clancy would go and actually interview people, go take tours of warships and um, airship uh, aircraft carriers to do the research for his books. He did tremendous research for his books. Another question you might want to ask yourself, are there any nonfiction books I'd like to read on this subject before I want to write it? So the final question is going to pull these all together. This is the difficulty level. Take all of those factors and kind of add them together in your mind. And it's going to come up with how comfortable are you with this genre, this word count, the series or standalone nature of the book, how much research you've already done or still needs to be done. And then just categorize whether taken all together, you think this is going to be easy to write sort of medium hard to write or really difficult to write. Now, of course, what you want is to write an easy novel. And I, these terms, I, I don't want to confuse you because this is not about how it is for the reader. This is not talking about a light, breezy, you know, dumbed down vocabulary. That's not what I mean by easy. I'm talking about the writing process, okay? Whether it is easy for you to write, it could be the most sophisticated novel in the universe, but if you're the person who is ready to write it, that's going to be an easy novel for you to write. And the other really important thing to keep in mind is that difficulty level is not objective. It's a subjective. It's subjective and it changes the more you know about your book. Here's an example of how it worked for me recently. Last spring, I had a lot of research left to do in my unfinished song fantasy series, which is my main series that I'm working on, but I wanted to publish another book. So I went through my little box of ideas and I found a novel that I had completely forgotten about that was half done. But when I went through this process and interrogated the novel and saw how much resources I had already poured into it, that I already had the world building, I already knew the plot, I already had the characters. I had only abandoned this novel because at the time I wrote it, which was 10 years ago, I didn't know these no-fail formulas for finishing a novel, so I would abandon novels all the time. Now I realized, oh my gosh, this is going to be so easy for me. Now I know exactly what to do to finish this. And that's what I did. I finished it. I put it out really quickly. I was able to keep doing research on my other series at the same time. And I had another novel published. Bam. Just like that. It was terrific. So even though, and that was true, even though the project had gone cold, I wasn't inspired. I know now using these tricks, how to re-inspire myself anytime I need to be inspired to write a book. Now, I know what you're thinking, but, 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 but Tara, hello. All you did was help me pick which novel to write. What I really need is help writing the actual novel. How is this going to help me write better and faster? Okay, okay. Don't get upset. Let me explain. Let me explain. First of all, think carefully. What causes you to write slowly and procrastinate and stare at the screen and do anything else but write? It's writer's block, right? And what is writer's block? No, it's not a trick question. Nine times out of 10, 
Writer's block is just not knowing the next step to take, the next scene to write. It's not knowing enough about your novel. So do you see how knowing in advance so much more about your novel is going to help you like hit writer's block before it even gets to you? It really helps. Now, is this the only thing you're going to need? Of course not. For instance, the next thing you're going to need is an awesome outline, a living, breathing outline that will grow with your novel so that you always know which scene to write next. And we're going to get to that in the next video. Now, I know that if you follow these steps and if you always know which step to take next, you're going to be able to breeze through that novel from start to finish so fast. And I believe in this so much that I want to make you, you know what? I'll make you a guarantee. I will buy you a $5 Amazon gift certificate. If you go through all these videos and it doesn't work, email me and I will send you a gift certificate as an apology that it didn't work and then I wasted your time because I know it will work. I really believe it will work for you. Why am I so sure it will work? Well, you see, Amazon lists 124,060 books on writing novels, screenplays, and stories. And I've read half of them. No, I'm just kidding. But I have read literally hundreds of books on writing. And when I say literally, I mean literally, not figuratively. And what they all come down to are the core principles of good writing. So when I call it, you know, no fail formulas, that's just my term for these classic core principles of good writing. But the only problem with all of these books, they have great stuff, but it can be so overwhelming. Plot, character, high concept, active voice, action beats. And then you get conflicting advice too: show, don't tell, but be descriptive. You, it's really hard sometimes to know what to follow when. And that's exactly what I tried to do for myself in creating this step-by-step -step process, this blueprint for always knowing the next step. Either you know how to write the scene or you know exactly what pieces you need to get into place in order to be able to write the scene. You always are gonna have the next step in the writing process no matter where you are. And that is what enables you to speed along from the beginning to the middle to the end of the book, always on target and always where you want to be without feeling like you're hitting a wall. If you haven't done it yet, please take a look at the worksheet and sign in to hear about the upcoming videos. If you already downloaded the worksheet and if you found this video and worksheet at all helpful, in, or if you found the little movie at the beginning funny, would you please pass it on to other writers that you know? Share it on Twitter or Facebook. You know the drill. And I would really, really love it if you would email at least one person, a writer friend, someone who's writing or about to write a book, and send that person an email or a direct message right now and tell them about this video. And I'm really serious. Send your friend an email right now. You can pause the video and I'll wait. Dum, 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 dum. And you know what? If you actually sent that email, I love you because most people would have just ignored me or blown me off, but you did it because you're awesome. And it shows that you can take action. If you can take action on that, then you can take action and finish your novel. Oh, and I wanted to tell you one more little thing about the secret bonus. Of course, if you've already downloaded the worksheet, you probably already found it. But if you haven't yet, that's okay. I'm going to give you a hint. What are the top 20 selling, best selling genres on Amazon? Do you know? Can you guess? They might surprise you. And another question. How much money does the average book in the top 100, the top 10, and the number one best selling slot on Amazon actually make a month? So yeah, that's in there. Just some little facts to inspire you. And no, I'm not saying that if you write your novel and that you're gonna be in the top 100 best-selling books on Amazon, obviously I have no way of knowing that. But it is, it is actually super awe-inspiring and cool to see how much one book can make in a month. And the names might surprise you too. It's not JK Rowling. This was actually, I think, I took this information from before her new pen name came out. 
so these the people who are in the top there's some famous people and then there's some ordinary hard-working genre writers who are just really successful in their niche so this kind of success is not as out of reach as you might think it it, it really isn't so of course I can't guarantee how you're gonna sell but I do know one thing absolutely if you never start your novel you're never gonna finish it if you never finish your novel you're never gonna sell it and if you never sell it then you're not gonna sell it for a hundred dollars a month you're not gonna sell it for a hundred thousand dollars a month that little video at the beginning oh oh by the way that was inspired by the memes of her friend of mine rain hall you might know her she's a very very good writing teacher and she's gonna be helping me in this course but anyway that little video it's very funny but it's also really true and it's also really sad because chances are you don't have that much time to write and it is so easy to fritter away those hours procrastinating goofing off on the internet dreaming about becoming a famous writer but not actually writing and then your time is gone and you tell yourself oh well I couldn't finish my novel because I just didn't have time you do have time you can finish your novel if you're willing to learn how to use your time wisely so don't give up you are so close you can do this and again, I have to warn you, these videos are only going to be up for a short time. So please, please, please take advantage of this material while it's available. Grab the freebie if you haven't yet. You don't have to say signed in if you don't want to. You can opt out at any time. But I strongly encourage you to stay on the list, stick with it, stick with me, and come back for my next video. I'm going to be teaching some awesome outlining methods that are so helpful they are practically magic. So I hope to see you then.